Hello, and welcome to this session covering some of the developer experience improvements introduced in Cycle 10. Today, we're going to be focusing on Cycle Serialization, the Cycle CLI, and Cycle for Visual Studio. We're going to start with Cycle Serialization. Now, Cycle has had serialization functionality for a long time. But with Cycle 10, we have a brand new way for you to serialize your content items to disk. You serialize your content items by creating modules. These consist of a JSON document with a specifically named format. You can then use rules to include and exclude items that you want to store to disk and then into your source control system. You can use aliasing to give you control over the names of the folders generated on disk. This is used to help with the problematic Windows path limit. You should also know that items are deserialized in the order they are defined in the module JSON documents. So you need to make sure that you have your templates listed before any items that are based on them. So you can think of this serialization as combining the best of both TDS and Unicorn, making it much easier for you to script your content changes and move them between your different environments as part of your development and deployment process. To make use of this new serialization approach, you have two different tools to help you. The first is the Sitecore CLI, a command line tool to interact with your Sitecore instance. The second is Sitecore for Visual Studio, a graphical tool to interact with your Sitecore instance from within Visual Studio itself. The crucial thing to note here though, is that the feature set between the two will be the same. You can just choose your preferred way of working, either on the command line or through a GUI. So let's start off by taking a look at these JSON module definitions. Okay, so I've hopped over to Visual Studio and I'm going to take a look at some of the module definitions included in this solution. Let's start off by taking a look in a feature module. And I've got this navigation feature. And we can see here we have this JSON file and it's called navigation.module.json. And this is what I mentioned before about the specific format of the naming of these files. The first part is an identifier saying what we're going to serialize. And then you'll always have this module.json suffix on the end. So let's take a look inside. Here we can see our JSON contents. We have a namespace, which gives an identifier to this package of items. And once in there, we then specify the include rules, showing what items we want to include in this. We have a definition for some templates related to this module. We have some layouts, and we also have some content resolvers. Each of these specified within their own area within the JSON document. You can see each one has its own name and the path to the area within the content tree that you want to serialize. Let's take a look at a more complex example. If we open up the project layer module, in here we have our main site definition and all of the actual content items for it. And you can see there's a lot more includes here. We have elements for layouts, for placeholders, for where we store all of our media for this site, for any forms that get created, any dictionary items. We have specific templates for the site. Then we actually get to the content itself before finally serializing the API keys involved. As I mentioned before, the order of these elements in here is very important. You'll notice that the templates node comes before the content node. And that's because when you re-import these items into Sitecore, they will be deserialized in the order they're defined in this document. So if you have your content items before your templates, you'll receive errors saying that the template definition doesn't exist when it tries to deserialize those content items for the first time. Okay, so we've defined our modules in our JSON documents, and now we need to start to use our tooling to interact with them. Let's start by taking a look at the Sitecore command line interface, or CLI. This gives us a method to interact with the Sitecore serialization functionality and other features. You can see that with Sitecore 10, there are four different commands available with the CLI. These are login, allowing you to authenticate your CLI with your Sitecore instance. Publish, used to perform a complete database publish. Serialization, used to interact with the Sitecore serialization functionality, pushing and pulling your items in and out of Sitecore. And finally, init, used to set up your solution at the start of your build. You'll see on this screenshot that we're using the dash dash help command to get information as well on what we can do. Well, that is available on each of the subcommands as well. So you can, for example, run a Sitecore serialization dash dash help to get information specific to the serialization command. These four commands combine to provide you the various different methods you can use to interact with your Sitecore instance from the command line. 
You could perform authentication, serialization, publishing, and initialization activities. When using the serialization function, the data is pulled from the module JSON files that form the basis of the new Sitecore serialization feature. So let's take a look at the Sitecore CLI in action. Right, so I've jumped over to PowerShell and I'm gonna to start to use the Sitecore CLI to issue commands to my Sitecore instance. And what I wanna do is I wanna take all of those serialized modules, which we just looked at, all the items that have been deserialized to disk. I wanna push them into my clean Sitecore instance. So to interact with the Sitecore CLI, I have it installed locally. So I use the .NET prefix and then we type Sitecore and you can go dash dash help just to see what commands are available. And as we saw before, there's the four commands there, login, publish, serialization, and initialization. And you can get further details in each of those. Say for example, I want detailed information on the serialization command. In that case, I can type .NET, Sitecore, Sir, and again, use the dash dash help. And it'll then give me the help output specific to the serialization command. So before I actually do my serialization, what I need to do is authenticate my PowerShell window with my Sitecore instance. To do that, I'm gonna do .NET Sitecore login. This brings up a browser window and it's gonna take me straight to my identity server instance where I will enter my credentials. I'm gonna use the usual admin and password. And now, as it tells us, we are now signed into Sitecore. My PowerShell window is authenticated. We can close the browser and you can see we get the same confirmation on the command line as well. Okay, so now my PowerShell window is authenticated with Sitecore. Let's do some serialization. New.NET, Sitecore, Sir, the shorthand version for serialization. And I'm gonna do a push. So that's gonna push all of the items that I have on disk into my Sitecore instance. You can see we have the output of all the different items that have been pushed. And these are the items we looked at before. We can see the items related to my navigation feature, and we can see the other items related to the project module as well, along with a few others. The final thing I need to do to get my site ready to go is actually publish these items. And again, you could do that right here on the command line. So we're gonna go .NET, Sitecore, publish. And that's gonna do a full database publish, moving everything from the master DB over to the web. And it's as easy as that. We've taken our Sitecore items, We've deserialized them back into the database, and then we've published them all over as well. I can hop over and view Sitecore in a browser now. We can go into the content editor, and we'll see all the different items that were deserialized are actually present in the tree. Here we can see I have my site, and I have my different pages in here. What I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna go and change one of the fields in here. We'll save that change. I'm gonna hop back to the CLI, and I'm gonna pull that change back down to disk. I'm gonna serialize that change back out. I just wanna show you how easy that is. Here, we're gonna use .NET, Sitecore again to access the Sitecore CLI. We'll use the shorthand version of serialization. And this time we're gonna do a pull. And what you'll notice is it's not gonna pull all of the items which are covered by those module JSON. It's only just gonna serialize the actual changes. So the diff between the database and the disk is what will come down. And here you can see the change highlighted. And it's as easy as that. So use the CLI to push and pull your content items from disk into the database and back out again. So the final tool we're gonna to look at in this video is Sitecore for Visual Studio, a new extension to Visual Studio, providing a graphical way for you to interact with your Sitecore instance. Once you install Sitecore for Visual Studio, you'll get the new Sitecore Module Explorer window, giving you a graphical view of all those module JSON files we discussed earlier and the actual items they refer to. You can see on this screenshot that you get a detailed view of all the modules in your solution and specifically which items are referenced by each, giving you a fast way to see what is and isn't currently being serialized. You can use Sitecore for Visual Studio to push and pull your content changes, just like you can with the CLI. When you're using Sitecore for Visual Studio, you get a nice graphical display of the differences between your serialized items and the target Sitecore system. Okay, so I've set up a clean instance of Sitecore, and what I'm gonna do is perform the exact same actions I did with the CLI previously, but now using Sitecore for Visual Studio instead. If we take a look in the content editor, we can see here that this is an empty Sitecore instance, ready for our items to be deserialized into. 
So let's hop over to Visual Studio and get started. I'm going to open up my site called Module Explorer. I'm just going to pin this to the left. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to open up the output window and pin this below. And if you use this drop down and select Team Development Experience, here you'll see the output of every action that's being performed by Sitecore for Visual Studio. Now, the first thing I need to do is authenticate, just like I do with the CLI. So to do that, underneath this Environments tab, we have our default environment, and I'm just going to refresh my login. I've already logged into the identity server here, so it just tells me straight away that I'm now authenticated with Sitecore. We can close that and hop back to Visual Studio. And you can see at the bottom, we get the same output. Your login is complete, and it tells us we can close the browser tab. We're now ready to do our sync. If I look at all the different modules, we can see the different JSON files I declared and all the different items that are specified within those. To do a full sync, I'm just going to right click on the top node and choose sync items. This is going to go away and basically give me back a diff of everything that exists on disk that doesn't exist in the database. As this is a clean sitecore instance, that's going to be every item I have. So I'm going to go ahead and select all, choose do sync. And this is now going to push each of these items over to Sitecore. As they change color and turn lighter gray, that's when the sync's been completed. You can close this now. And you can see there's been a series of responses output at the bottom. The last thing I need to do is to go and do my publish. So to do that, once more, we're going to go back to the default environment. Right click. I'm going to set up to publish. This again, the same as one using the CLI, is going to publish everything from the master database over to the web ready to be accessed. So I can hop back over to my browser now. And if I refresh my content node, we can see my items have been deserialized. So the last thing I'm going to do is once more make the same content change. I'm going to update my field. We'll save it. Then we'll hop back to Visual Studio this time. Now once more, I'm going to right click and do sync items. And here we can see it's pulled in the one content change we've made. We can select it, select to do the sync, and now that change has been reflected on disk. So, to recap, the Sitecore serialization tool allows you to persist your Sitecore items to disk, meaning you can store them in source control and integrate them into your DevOps flow. Sitecore serialization is configured via JSON modules, and these are used to specify precisely which items you want to be serialized. The Sitecore CLI is a command line tool allowing you to issue commands to your Sitecore instance, giving you the power to serialize items, push serialized items, publish your changes, and also to initialize a new project. Sitecore for Visual Studio is a graphical extension to Visual Studio, giving you the same functionality as the Sitecore CLI, but from within Visual Studio itself. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to follow the Learn Sitecore hashtag for future videos.